We're learning the blues. Playing the blues feels like what the guitar was made to do. When you play the blues, you get a piece of guitar history because all other genres at some point can be traced back to the blues. Everything in our modern age goes back to the blues roots of the 20s and 30s and the classic BB King riffs that you've heard if you're looking for this video. When you learn the blues, you don't only get better at the blues, you get better at every other genre. Whether you've never played the blues before or you've been playing it for a while, I'm gonna teach you a whole bunch of things that you get off to a great quick start and start playing right away. So let's get started. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own blues music and teach you five licks, two grooves, and one turnaround so that you can play this. So let's start with the basis of all blues music, the 12 bar blues chord progression. So that right there is 12 bars. I'm in the key of A minor pentatonic, and I'm gonna be playing the one, four, and five chord. So all this means is we've got four bars of A, followed by two bars of D, back to two bars of A, then followed by two bars of E, and then end on two bars of A, 12 bars. So the quickest way to get moving on from here and make something really cool is to play the notes of your A minor pentatonic scale on top of that chord progression. Next step from there to make this a lot spicier is to take those same notes, but add hammer-ons, slides, pull-offs, and most importantly for blues, bends. The most important thing for bends is to make them sound like the note one or two frets up. You just want to match it by ear when you're doing your bend. You just got to practice this. Over time, you'll get it smoother. Just want to practice trying to match those two notes and then you can eventually do it in real time. In blues, there are some of the most common notes that you bend all over the fretboard. In the position we're playing in right here, these are the most common ones. And the last thing to note before I get into some sweet licks are what's known as the blues notes. These are some extra notes that you add into your pentatonic scale to make that signature bluesy sound. All right, so now you know your rhythm track, now you know your pentatonic minor scale. Next thing to do after that is learn a few cool licks to play. Here are a few sweet blues licks to get you started on your path to blues mastery. So here's your first lick. Pretty simple, straightforward. We've got two bends are the main parts here. On those two frets and we're bending them both to be two frets higher. So, and then and so the other main part of this is we're going to do bend, fifth fret, on both of these strings, and the next bend, and then the fifth fret. And that's the lick. The important part of this one is the first three notes. This is kind of the ultimate blues lick that can be played in front of basically anything else that you're going to play. You can throw it in all the time. This one was first made popular by Chuck Berry. It's his classic riff. And you can just do this at the start of any riff you're playing. Throw it in, it'll add some bluesy goodness. <laughs> So here's lick number two, same kind of feel as the last one, just slightly different note order. We're still bending these same two strings. You got 
That's all there is to it. Try and throw this in between your other solos and you can use that to really just spice up that blues. And remember, vibrato is a huge part of blues, so on that last note you can just add in a little vibrato to give a little bit of shake and wobble at the end of that, because blues is about soul, not the straight clean picking. We want things to have lots of spirit and emotion to it. interesting things here. Mostly we're just going up that A minor pentatonic scale. To start off we've got these notes. Throwing in this blues note right there on that sixth fret. Then continuing on. So you've got and then the third and fourth strings on the fifth fret. And then back. And don't forget your vibrato on that last note to hold it out. Once you've mastered those tasty licks on this fifth position minor pentatonic scale, the next step is to expand it to the entire fretboard. Right here, I've highlighted all the notes in the A minor pentatonic scale throughout the entire fretboard. And once you learn these, you will have unlocked the entire fretboard and the possibilities are endless. I've also highlighted all the blues notes and the notes that you'll most commonly want to bend so that you can add that extra spice to your playing. At this point, you might want to take a screenshot of this part of the video so that you can see all these notes, because it is a bit of a doozy to memorize. But if you can take your time, practice with this, and memorize all these notes, then you'll be able to unlock the entire fretboard. So once you know your pentatonic scale, and you've got a few cool licks that you can play inside it, the next most important element to blues music is phrasing, which is effectively adding pauses in between your different licks for dramatic effect. So what this ends up looking like is you play a lick and then you pause to add some dramatic effect. To show what you're trying to express through your guitar. The best way I've heard to think about phrasing is like your first lick is asking a question and then your second lick after the pause is the answer to that question. cool part here is that we're starting with that classic blues riff, those three notes, but then this time instead of bending this 8th fret, we're sliding straight up. And then we got some bends on this 10th fret here on the 1st string. And this one we're bending up and then going back down before changing notes. So you get that full that full wail on your guitar there. And then this one's a good example of how you can start to incorporate your different scale positions. So you slide from this fifth position to all the way to this eighth position. So then slow down for you, that's This one here is another example of how you can shift into your different positions. And there's a few other cool little things that we did in here. This riff comes courtesy of Mitch from behind the camera right now. And to start off, we're sliding in up to this ninth fret here. Then you're going to come in. 
And you got this quick little grace note hammer on to give just a quick little subtle addition. Then we've got a few slides down. And then to finish it off, you've got this third and fourth bar double note. And then a hammer on, done it off. Once you've got your scale down and you can solo and phrase, eventually you're going to want to add a little more groove to your playing and rhythm is a great way to do this. You can learn different types of rhythm tracks and that's really going to help add a lot more groove and excitement to that playing. The great part about blues is if you know a few different rhythms and you know how to solo on top of them, then you can mix and match your different rhythms and you can use that to create a whole song. When you're ready to shake things up from your first chord progression, you can change it up in tons of different ways and use them interchangeably. Here's a second option that you can use. we've got one little riff that we're repeating on our three different chords of our blues progression. We're just repeating this for all the bars of the chord progression and this one works because we're basically playing our power chord here on all the chords in our progression. So we start off with this one chord which is your A, play that for four bars, then we're going up to the D for two, back to the A, and then up to the E, and then back to the A. So this just follows the exact same progression we learned below here, but now we're just changing things up a bit, so you can use these two completely interchangeably whenever you want to switch things up. So your root note tells you what chord you're playing, and you're just playing the exact same pattern on each chord. So your A is like this, your D is like this, same pattern, just one string up, and then your E is two frets over. And that's all there is to it. The last thing you want to know to be strumming and picking the blues is a turnaround. And a turnaround is basically a transition to go from the end of your one chord progression to the start of the next one. In the 12 bar blues, this usually comes in on the 11th bar, and it's a little transition piece or riff or lick that lets you start and tell the next chapter of your story. Turnarounds are great because they're some of the most traditionally bluesy sounding licks. So here's an example of a turnaround to get you started. You'd usually place this on your 12th bar of your 12 bar blues progression so you can come back in and restart the progression on the one. So in our example here, you'd be on your E chord on the 11th bar, and then you play your turnaround, and then you come back to that A chord for bar number one. And then you continue the cycle again. It just gives you that nice turnaround transition to start the progression again. So to play this, we're just going to alternate between different frets here and then the seventh fret on the D string. And then we've got this chord right here. I don't actually know the name of this, but it looks like this. And then we're going to slide up chromatically, so one fret at a time. Give us that really chromatic -y blues feel. And again, you can see that we're using that blues note there with the root of this chords, which is why this works. Now to make an entire blues song, all you really need to do is take all the things I just taught you here and put it all together. Pick a groove that you like, 
add your licks in between that groove and just make sure to come back to the groove to keep a consistent rhythm. In blues, you don't need to overwhelm yourself with a ton of different notes. This isn't metal shredding. B.B. King made an entire career off of just his three famous notes. So with that, experiment with what I said here, make these licks your own, invent your new ones, and play the blues. Backing tracks and tabs for everything I covered in this video are available on my Patreon. You can find that in the description below.